welcome back. Today I'm finally bringing you a review on the brand new Milani palettes, both the, what are you called? <laughs> Gilded Noir and Gilded Rogue palette. I am so very excited. I picked up both of these. They launched the day of my birthday, June 11th, and they had incredible shipping. I received it next day. I didn't pay for extra shipping or anything like that. It was located here in California, which probably helped add to it, but usually even when I order from, say, ColourPop's website, it usually takes about five days to get to me just with processing, and then the shipping is about two, three days, but I had it in hand the very next day. I thought that was really awesome. So great start to these palettes. I have since been testing them out consistently, so it's been a few weeks now and I have formed a really solid opinion about these two palettes. In today's video, I want to show you guys some live swatches of these. I also want to demo two different looks, one using each palette. So I'm excited to show you guys that, but let's take a quick look here at the palettes. Beginning with the Gilded Noir palette, here is what she looks like. Both these palettes do retail for $19.99, which is the same price point as their previous Soft and Sultry palettes, I believe they are called. I actually never picked those up. But here's the Noir, and here is the Rogue. Very beautiful. And just for your reference, so that way you guys can see the front and then the inside side-by-side -side comparison between both the palettes. There is a total of 16 shades in each palette. The Noir palette over here has a mix of mattes and metallics, whereas the Rogue over here has a mix of foils, mattes, shimmers, and two glitter shades. So, I mean, first look at the palette, definitely very gorgeous color combos. I'm gonna do some swatches here for you guys. I'm gonna show the Noir palette first, which has the black front. And actually, I'm not gonna do any live swatches. We will be here for the entire day if I do that. So I'm gonna quickly swatch it out on my arm and then we'll just kind of look at it really quickly. So let me do that. Here we go, the first palette swatched out. Like I said, it, it is a mix of a mattes and metallics. The majority is gonna be metallics. We only have four matte shades to work with, which are these two front shades right here, the cream shade and the kind of tan shade. And then the last two shades, which is this dark brown and the black shade. The rest in between are all shimmers or metallics. Look at this fun array of colors here. Now we're diving into the Gilded Rogue palette with the swatches. Now this one has the mix of not only metallics, foils, and mattes, but it has two glitter formulas. So the red and the purple over here are glitters. So I'll just kind of go through really quickly which one's which, since the other one, it was kind of easy to tell it was the front two and the last two that were the mattes, rest shimmers. So up front here, we have the shade, I think you pronounce it ethereal. This shade is a shimmer. Then we have two matte shades here, Hush Hush and Peach Fuzz. We have a metallic on taupe, fun play on words, slow burn, a metallic, Rose Soray, a matte. Carrot, a metallic. Wait, what? Another metallic. Sangria, a matte. Old Fashioned, I would say more of a shimmer. It's not as metallic looking. Overbaked, a matte shade. A VC Moy, I'm totally butchering that, but that is a metallic shade. We then have By the Glass, a matte. We have the two glitters, Femme and Wifey. And lastly, we have Bewitched, another shimmer shade. So that's the whole Gilded Rogue palette. So now that I've shown you guys the swatches, I'm gonna lead into showing you guys a look with each palette. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you guys my final thoughts on both of them. For the first look, I went with something a little bit more dramatic. I realize now that my eye look almost matches the outside packaging of this. Kind of works out perfectly. So I am getting right into it and we're starting off with the shade Lust, this dark chocolatey brown. I'm gonna be packing this shade on in that halo shape, creating that circle all the way around when you add it to the lower lash line and just really packing on that color. And I'm using my Ipsy X Tetris brush I just got in my Ipsy bag. 
This is perfect for it. It's very tiny and tapered and can get the color exactly where I want it. So I'm just really pressing in the shade at first. Not focusing on blending at this point, I'm just more so packing on the color and then gonna blend out after. And then once I'm happy with the level it's at, I'm gonna take my brush cleaner, clean off the brush I was just using, make sure there's no extra product, and I'm gonna lightly run it along the edges to blend it out. Just as a quick blend before we go in with a lighter shade and blend out the edges. And then for the second step, I'm gonna be going in with the shade Entitled, and I'm using that on my Luxie 121 Mini Tapered, and this is just gonna to be to help blend out that brown shade, blending out the edges. So I'm just taking all the way around. And before I forget, I'm also gonna take that shade Lust, the dark brown, and run it all the way along the lower lash line with my Real Techniques. Which brush are you? Shading brush. Blend that all the way across. And then to help deepen things up just a smidge, I'm gonna dive into dark side. In the dark side of the moon. Taking that on my Morphe Y19 brush, I'm gonna very lightly pack it on the outer V area. Just using little padding motions. I'm not blending upwards yet. I'm just packing on that shade and the same on the inner part of the lid. Now dunk back into the palette, add a little bit more, bring the color upwards. Once that color is packed on, I'm switching over to my Sigma E30 brush, and I'm gonna use this to help blend along the edges and bring that color in the crease right here just to connect that color, blend it out all together. Taking a little bit of that color on the lower lash line too. Adding a little bit more color just to intensify things after it's been blended. If I see an area that just needs a little bit more attention, I'll just pack on a little extra color and then switch brushes again, blend that out. Whoops, I should have added some extra powder over here on the nose. So I'm getting a little bit more fallout here, out here. It's probably for me not tapping off the brush enough. I'm gonna take a little bit more of my Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Eden. I've started to use the primer instead of concealer to cut the crease. Whoops, almost dropped my brush. And I actually find it works out really well when cutting the crease. Perhaps if you are concerned about creasing from the concealer, give it a try putting the eyeshadow primer down. So I'm just using my Bare Minerals concealer brush to start shaping out the halo. We can now move on to the all over the lid color and I'm going in with solid gold. I'm also giving it a little spritz just to help it out. I always do that. And I'm plopping this shade down everywhere that I placed the primer. Oh yeah, and I'm using my MAC 248 brush to apply it. And just for fun, because I wanted to test it out, I took the shade Don't Ask on the other side of the brush, the same brush I was just using. Again, a spritz. And I just pack that in the center of the lid. Then just to tie everything together, I'm going back in with the shade Lust using my Makeup Geek small pencil brush. Is that the one? Small crease brush. And I'm just applying that color along the edges, blending it out. I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Bubbly on a pencil brush and highlight the brow bone. Now all that's left to do is wipe away the bake, go in with some Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, apply some falsies. I'm gonna go in with the Salon Perfect 614 Wispies. Boom! Here's the final look using the Gilded Noir palette. Let's now roll on into eyeshadow look number two using the Gilded Rogue. Jumping right into eyeshadow look number two, we're gonna now use the Gilded Rogue palette, and I'm gonna get started with the shade right up top called Peach Fuzz. 
I'm taking that shade on my Luxie 121 Mini Tapered. I'm just gonna start building the shade up in the crease. So I'm just gonna be building up the shade and blending it out from the inner to the outer. Same color and same brush. I'm also gonna take it all the way across on the low lash line. Next, I'm gonna take the shade Sangria, taking that on my Tetris X Ipsy tapered blending brush. I'm packing that in the outer V, just laying down that shade. And once that color is packed on, just gonna blend out the edges working it in slightly to the crease. Perhaps taking a little bit more of that shade and vamping it up a little bit because I feel like it gets a little bit lost after you blend. So I'm just packing on a little bit more to intensify things. Also, because it's just so quick and easy, I'm using the same brush, same color, working that on to the lower lash line, Let's say about two thirds of the way in. Then we are moving down to By the Glass. Taking that shade on my Morphe Y15 brush. I'm gonna just pack that shade on, make things a little bit more darker. So I'm just packing on that shade, slightly blend it in to the crease. I'm trying to keep it fairly low because I still want to see that pink and that peach shade. I'm not trying to bring it up too high. I'm gonna get into this more at the end when I give you guys my final thoughts about the palette, but I've noticed that with this shade and a few other dark shades, I get a division where the crease is. You can see a line where it starts to look a little bit patchy, which is kind of frustrating because I have to then go in with more color and try to blend that out. So I'm going in with even more pigment right now trying to blend through that and for this shade since it's so dark i am gonna take a different brush i'm taking the real techniques smudging brush i'm just gonna add a little bit out here towards the corner then we're gonna have a little bit of fun with some glitter i'm gonna take my nyx glitter glue or glitter primer what they call it take a little bit to the back of my hand and I'm gonna be using the same brush I'm gonna use for the glitter eyeshadow to apply the glitter glue. Just makes it easier. So I'm just tapping on some glitter primer all over the lid where I'm gonna place the glitter. And then I'm gonna go in with the glittery shade down here called Wifey. And it's actually not just purple, it has some blue glitter flecks inside of it also. So the combo is beautiful. So just plopping this all over the lid. And that was the last step for the shadow. Very easy and straightforward, not a whole lot of steps to it. All that's left now is to wipe away the bake, add some mascara and some lashes. I'm gonna use the same combo as I did in the previous look and then I'll be done. And here is the final look. So those are both of the looks completed using each of the two new palettes. So let me give you guys my final thoughts. Now, I had very high expectations for these palettes. I mean, they looked beautiful to me. I was hoping that they were really gonna pack a punch when I started to use them. Oh, open up, open a palette, there we go. I mean, just look at these palettes. They look really fun. They look very vibrant. I was so excited that Milani was stepping out of their comfort zone and they were doing something so fun and out there like these two palettes because at the drugstore, I mean, there is not a whole lot of fun, colorful options. I mean, there's some here and there, but I felt like these were so adventurous for the brand to bring out. So the fact that you could, would be able to find something so fun at your local drugstore is awesome because not everyone has an Ulta or Sephora or likes to shop there. So this would be a great option for a lot of people to have access to. With that being said though, I ended up being pretty disappointed. So let's roll right into it. 
Now, in both of these palettes, I found that the lighter matte shades performed really well, applied to the lid very beautifully, had no issues blending it, packed on a lot of color, it was fine. But where I ran into issues was with the darker matte shades, so the black down here, dark side, I had a lot of issues where I felt like it looked patchy. I would pack on the shade, I would blend it out, and I feel like the shade then disappeared. I'd have to go in with more color, and then as I kept blending it, I just felt like it looked very, just very off, which was the same issue I was having with the shade in the Rogue palette by the glass. I had the same issues with this shade where I would pack it on and just felt like it was very lackluster. The color was not that intense. I went in to blend it, and I felt like I lost a lot of the color, would go in to blend more, and then I had issues where it would leave lines in the crease where some of the pigment would not stick and I would blend and blend and blend and blend and blend and it just did not really help. And same with the shade Overbaked, had issues with that one, had some issues with the shade Lost, which is really unfortunate, at least for the Noir palette. That is the only issue that I had with this palette. These shimmery shades are gorgeous. The lighter matte shades perform beautifully, so unfortunately these two darker shades ruin it for me. It definitely brings down the level of the palette. And I had one more issue with the Rogue palette, and that is the two glitter shades. The formula that they sit in, you definitely can't use that alone on the lid. It, I have tried it. I have tried it different ways. Like I showed you guys, I put on the glitter glue today, and before that I did try to use these with just how they are sitting in the pan here. No, 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 no. <laughs> it gets so crazy. The formula just does not stay put. It sets itself where it doesn't feel like it's Vaseline in there, but it does not want to stay. I mean, if you have folds in your lid like myself, most of us do, you will get a lot of creases throughout the day. Using it with a glitter glue does help. It does not crease as fast, but I found that it still ends up getting some creases. They're definitely a little bit more minor, but I mean, it's where the lid folds in on itself. I've seen that I start to get some lines going through it, which is always disappointing. I've never been a fan of getting glitter inside of palettes like these. Normally doesn't work out. I've only ever found one palette that actually worked. That was the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. They had a glitter formula in that one. I was able to use it just straight out the pan and apply it to the lid and it stayed put the whole day. That is a first. That is the only palette. I mean, that's the standard right there. So these two shades, I was again disappointed by. So that added with the matte shades I wasn't a big fan of. Also the shade Ethereal looks beautiful when you swatch it out. Very pretty, dusty pink shade, but when I go in to apply it on the lid, it does not really show up. It does not want to come off onto the lid. I use it with a brush, it doesn't work. I put setting spray, does not work. I use my finger even, and I get nothing off. It's more of a topper shade, but I feel like even then it just does not do enough for me. So that shade right there is kind of like meh. So this palette for me is definitely lower on the list than the Noir palette since I did have more issues with this one. If I were to give these a rating, I'd probably give this one a three out of five stars, this one a four out of five. Maybe that's being really generous, but I definitely would say that these two palettes are not something that you should rush out and get. I was disappointed by these. Since I have them in my collection, I will definitely keep using the shades that I like, but if I were you guys, I would probably pass on this, which is so unfortunate. Oh, I was so excited by these palettes and unfortunately I was let down. So I do really hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you guys these new palettes, testing them out, giving guys two new eye looks, and giving guys my final opinion on them. I really wanna know what you guys thought about these two palettes down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you guys and see what you guys are thinking about it. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little bell button, and I'll see you guys in my next video.